Welcome to Jamie TV where we do not pissy pants about. Today I want to show you my latest purchase, the Akai LPD8. I want to show you how I've been using this in my latest jamming AUM on my iPad. And more importantly, I'm going to show you how to set one up just in case you fancy getting yourself one. At this channel, I demo music gear, I play things with strings, and I show you how to make music with your iPad or your iPhone. Soon I will be branching out into other mobile devices and also I will be starting to include some desktop software as well. So if it sounds like that's the kind of thing that sizzles your sausage then please give me a thumb up, subscribe and ding my bell. Okay, let's get on with it. The playing time of the music determines the number of grooves per inch that will be cut into the record. And exactly one and a half turns before the music begins. In the many, many long years that this stupid old hippie has been making music, I've craved lots of different kinds of music gear, but one thing that's never occurred to me to buy has been any kind of controller other than just a straightforward keyboard. But I guess recently I'm talking to a, a new crowd of musicians and they're always banging on about controllers. And I thought, why haven't I got a controller? And I thought, you know what? For my birthday, I got some Amazon vouchers and most of that was took up by buying an Apple camera kit adapter. But with the change, I thought I'll get myself a nice, cheapest chips, simple little controller and I'll dive in and see what I can make of it. Now, within a couple of hours, I got it doing all of this. The LPD-8 is capable of four different programs. Another word for this might be four different scenes or four different banks. What it means is that you get the eight pads and the eight turning knobs four times. So if I go and press this program button over here and then I select one of the four pads at the bottom that correspond to the four different programs. I'm gonna select program number one and then we press pad to go back into normal functionality. Now what I did when I first started trying to get my head around how to map this thing into AUM, I went into NURAC and I built myself a module that had eight pads and eight turny knobs. I just thought this would kind of make things straightforward in, in my head. And then I actually went and grabbed an image of the LPD-8, pulled it into NURAC and I made myself a module that looked exactly like the controller. Now, one thing that I need to show you about NURAC before we proceed, and you'll see why in just a moment, why I'm telling you this, NURAC is capable of three different racks in one. So if you imagine your instrument is coming in here into the rack of effects and out this side, we can switch out the rack of effects for a different one by pressing here where we would build another set of modules and the third one here. So let's go back to number one because that's the only one that I've put into this, this particular bank in, in NURAC. Now, in order to map the controller to the module, we need to go up here to the third icon in from the left at the top of the window here. It's the one that looks like a set of faders on a mixing desk. And then first thing to do is to go up here where we'll see a drop down list. And what you need to do is to pick out the controller that you're trying to map 
and make sure you've ticked it and then you can come back out and you'll see down here we've got the three racks listed okay well we want to work with rack a now the thing about new rack when it comes to mapping is that the parameters are all just called parameter one two three four etc so there was nothing in this list then this is my first experience of mapping a controller there was nothing to give me any indication of what was what so it was a case of just trial and error going through them and as it happened it didn't work out to be that hard because the first thing I wanted to do was to map this pad to that pad there and so all I did was I went to parameter one let me just clear this off so I can re-engineer this for you I went to parameter one and I pressed learn and then I pressed this pad and then from there on it worked right so then all I did was I went through the first eight parameters and they turned out to be the correct corresponding parameters for these eight pads so I've got all these mapped and then it got a little bit more tricky as I proceeded because there were little gaps in between because there are actually other things there's a little uh, switch to loop the pads here and there's an on off switch for the harmonizer here so those things kind of break up the list of the turny knob parameters but just through a little bit of trial and error I went through and I found the correct ones so let's just re-engineer one of those for you so I'll go to uh, parameter number 10 and I'll clear that off okay now press on that and press learn and turn this knob here and you'll see that working and you know what the first few times you get this working it's a great feeling it makes you feel like a wizard <laughs> it's amazing stuff okay right so that is how I mapped the LPD 8 to new rack so that was my first bank so let's come out of here and I'll show you the next one okay so feeling pretty pleased with myself pretty encouraged I mean I'm a total controller noob but it didn't take me very long at all to get the LPD 8 controlling new rack so I thought wouldn't it be awesome if with program number two I could start and stop my project in AUM now I didn't know how to do that I had no clue but what I did was I pressed program and I went over to program number two press pad again and then looking up here I found MIDI control bottom right hand side I've never looked at that before so I press on there and here you'll see all the things that you can assign the controller to are listed very clearly now at first I selected for pad one start play but then I found a bit further down the list toggle play actually will um, start and stop play and then stop rewind I can press stop and take it back to the beginning press play again so I chose those two controls but you'll see here you can also have um, a rewind you can have record on and off you can use tap tempo all kinds of things if you start exploring in here um, and then I thought what am I going to do with my spare pads and my spare turning knobs in this program and looking down the list here I found there's a list of every channel that I've got in this project so clicking on here I saw that I could assign volumes mute solos record enable all sorts of things so for this project all I did was I assigned a turning knob to each channel so I've got a volume and I assigned the pads my spare pads to be mute controls so if I just come out of here and I'll just give you a quick demo so let's just mute off the synth the bass and let's take up the volume of the drums 
Okay, so that's all pretty exciting. And one thing I should have mentioned before now but forgot is you will see if you look closely here that it says channel two. And that's because, and it will say channel two uh, on everything in this program bank because the MIDI information that's coming out of program two is MIDI channel two. And what I should have told you earlier is that everything coming from program one will be MIDI channel one. Um, and of course, program three is MIDI three and program four is MIDI four. That can be changed and I will show you how to change that later on. Now in drum computer, you can use these little keys down here to switch between the patterns that you've got programmed in. And I was doing that in my jam, but these keys are tiny. So I actually used the AUM keyboard to trigger them from here. And I thought, how cool would it be if I could use the LPD-8 for that? But before I could map that out, I had to go to my desktop and install the software that comes with the controller and do this. Okay, first job. Before you open your software, make sure you've got your LPD-8 plugged into your computer with a USB lead. Then you can open your software. In my experience, if you do it the other way around, it just doesn't work. Go to the drop down list, select LPD-8. And now you'll see up here, we've got four presets. These are the four programs saved into your LPD-8. So if we just call one of them up, and then you'll see that this is program number four, and it's going out on MIDI channel number four. If I wanna change that, I can change that in here. Then if you look at each pad, you'll see that we can change the note that that pad sends out. So if we wanted to play an instrument with it, perhaps we can change what uh, what note we're gonna play with each pad. And if you'd rather see that represented as a numerical value, you can just switch that over here. We can also change the program change number and MIDI CC number of each pad. And we can switch the pad from momentary to toggle. Now, for everything I've done so far, momentary has sufficed. But one of my friends told me that when he uses a controller to operate the transport bar in one of his digital audio workstations, he has to change it to toggle. So I'm glad for the benefit of his experience because I didn't really know why we might need that. And then over here, you'll see that for the twisty turning knobs, we can change the lowest and highest values attainable by the knob, and we can change the MIDI CC number as well. Once we've made the changes that we need to make to our particular program, we can then send it to the LPD-8 by commit upload. Then if we want to continue and work on a different preset, we just select it here and it calls that one up from the controller. Now, this is preset three and you'll see here the changes that I needed to make. On the pads here, I've changed the note values starting at uh, C minus two, going through C sharp minus two, etc., consecutively for all eight pads because that's what drum computer requires to trigger the patterns that you've programmed in. Now, once you're happy that you've got all your presets set the way that you want them to be, and you've uploaded them to your LPD-8, then you might want to save that preset. And if you're wanting to use the same controller for a number of different functions, you can save lots and lots of presets and load up the appropriate one by plugging your LPD-8 into your desktop and then taking it and plugging it into whatever device you're gonna use it with. Once I got all that set up, it was easy enough then to go over to program three, go to drum computer, and then just map the LPD-8 to drum computer. And from there on, the eight pads worked immediately for changing my patterns over during my jam. And I then went further down the drop down list and I found each place where it said mixer level. There are eight of them for the eight volumes in the mixer and I mapped each of them to my turning knobs, giving me control over my mixing desk like this, which is pretty cool. So I'm sure you get the drill by now and I don't need to say much more. So I'll just show you very quickly uh, that with program number four, 
I decided to operate Bliss's slow machine and this turned out to be the kind of app that really makes a controller worthwhile. I can even pop the effect in and out with a pad. So if you're live jamming, this is, this is just fabulous. I can make the app appear and disappear and I've mapped these things so that I can do I can do filtering on the go and I can do stuff like this and I can change all of the key parameters that I might want to change while I'm jamming with this thing this is just this was just really really enjoyable and what made it particularly special was that when I went to the little fader icon everything in here was perfectly listed very very clearly so I could see even a noob like me could see exactly what everything was a couple of other little things I want to mention to you about this controller. It has a button for program change and a button for MIDI CC, although all I've needed so far is the pad button. It is as light as a feather, it weighs less than a pound, and yet it's a very sturdy construction. So this is perfect for using on the fly. Using on the go, just throw it in your bag, and what I would suggest if you're going to do that is if you're saving presets for it, then upload them to the cloud so that you can recall them wherever you are on the go. For me, I'm so glad I bought this controller. I didn't know I needed a controller. I just thought I'd check it out. And now I've enjoyed it so much, I want to have loads of them. Now I think I've covered everything I can for now about this controller. So if there's anything I've missed, if there's anything further that you'd like to know, then please email me. My address is down below the video, or you can contact me on any of the social media that's listed down there. If you want to check out my website, my merchandise, my music, my Patreon, anything, it's all down there below the video, all my social media stuff, and feel free to stalk me. So until I make another video, Take care of yourselves, be good people, make lots of music, and don't piss your pants about. See you later.